Welcome to another wonderful Ed's Techno Talks. Today we're going to show you how to set Ryzen 5 1600, a gigabyte gaming motherboard, some RAM, an NVMe Samsung SSD, a graphics card, a lovely case, and a power supply to make a working computer. Let's get started. In order to install the power supply, you will need to remove the side panel from the side of the case. To do this, simply undo the two thumb screws located on the side of the computer side panel and then pull off. If your case is fitted with one, remove the power supply basement. Now we are ready to install the power supply. We've secured the power supply with the four screws in these locations and then we've plugged in the power cable so we can ground ourselves simply by just touching the power supply it will be okay to handle electrostatic sensitive components. Now we're going to install the motherboard where we're going to open it and we're going to put it on top of a cardboard box that comes on which is great because that won't conduct static electricity. To install this CPU we'll have to remove the AM3 mounting plates on this motherboard and to do that we'll just remove these four screws. We're now going to unbox this where well, we'll just use the knife to cut through the seal and on the inside we will find the processor itself with a lovely sticker and our thermal solution and a big box with an empty gap at the bottom. Hmm. Can you chuck that on the floor now because there's nothing in there. So why we'll start with the CPU. We'll just lift the retention bracket on the motherboard. Open up the box here. We will be very careful not to touch the top of this CPU or the bottom because we could damage it and then it might not work and then this would be a very fun video wouldn't it? So I'll give that to Josh and you can do that. And now that we've got that, we can unbox this. We can lift it, and we can see there's ample thermal paste. <laughs> we'll install CPU there, and we'll tighten it on alternate corners. So we'll get our screwdriver out. Now that we've installed this lovely heatsink fan, we're going to install some memory. And the motherboard says that we should use these dim slots. So to install the memory, just make sure they're open. And then we can install this awesome memory from Corsair. And make sure the notch here, I got the notch on the motherboard. And we line that up, apply firm, even pressure, make sure they lock, do the same the second dim, which goes just like that, it's locked and we're done. Now we'll move on to installing the NVMe SSD. So to install it, we'll just unscrew the little thing hiding there and then we get this the camera's definitely not up here it's here and then we install it with the little knock that's up there push in place push down find that tiny screw again oh that's tiny oh dear don't try this at home 
Hey, you are doing at home. Oh yes. Oh dear. No more Titan. That's done. Now I'll put the motherboard in the case and we'll have to install some motherboard standoffs and I'll show you how to do that. In order to install the motherboard, we're going to install this I.O. shield which simply goes at the back of the case here. To install it, we might need the butt end of a screwdriver and give it a light tap. That's going to be fiddly, isn't it? There we go, and now it's installed. So we're going to install the tiny little motherboard standoff. And before we install them, it's worth noting that we should check that these are in fact the correct standoffs. And we've got the correct screws for the motherboard. We can do that by just thre threading the ones which you think for the motherboard is the standoffs. You can see that, that threads very nicely. It's important. So to install them, uh, I've got a fancy little, it's 5mm hexagonal doodad and the motherboard stand up sits in there and then we'll put it in the case line it up tighten it they don't have to be too tight um, but you know if you don't have one of these you could just use a, you know, a set of pliers or something of that nature I think they even include one in the uh, case now we're going to lift the motherboard um, Put it in. It'll line up the front IO header. Make sure everything's in properly. It's good. And then you've got to line up the motherboard with the motherboard standoffs that you just installed. And then you get the those screws that you've just tested, you put them through the motherboard, and there are the holes, and you just tighten it. Now, you shouldn't put these too tight because if you put them too tight, you risk slightly damaging your motherboard. And we'll just do these. So, to install the graphics card, we'll need to remove the slots in the case and we can simply do that by just unscrewing these, these are thumb screws and they can be a bit stubborn so you, know, you, can, you can bring out a uh, screwdriver, we've removed them, so we can bring the graphics card, our lovely gigabyte wind force card, we'll gently put that in. Make sure that the PCIe slot retention bracket is open. We'll lower that in and line it. And then there's a slightly audible click. And we uh, listen for that, and that tells us that it's put in. And then we use the thumb screws that we removed from the, uh, the retention base. You probably won't need the screwdriver. And we'll just Thread them in to and our power supply will take the PCIe connector, which is just the six pin for this. 
put that in. And then we know that's going to work. Um, and now we'll get to plugging in all the connectors for the motherboard. So we'll start off with this big one, which is the 24 pin one for the, for the motherboard. And all you got to do is just bring up the house pipe bundle. We will have one. Put in. And the motherboard is quite flexible, so make sure you support it from underneath. And there's the 8 pin the ATX house connector that goes there. And we'll connect the fans up. There's a 3 pin fan connector here and there's a four pin fan connector on the motherboard so what we've got to do is align the two slots with the prong that comes up with the motherboard we can very simply just install that there we go and we've got a few more to do We'll install the SATA cables and you may have been aware that they're an L-shaped plug so you can only put them in the right way around and as you know said before if you use the NVMe SSD you do disable two of the SATA ports so just bear that in mind if you plan on using this motherboard. Now we're going to talk about using the front panel I.O. In this case is a USB 3 plug and to use that we'll simply push that into the USB 3 jack which here just says USB 3 which is very descriptive. Put that in there and you'll notice there's a small arrow on the top which lines up with the arrow on the motherboard and we won't need the uh, the additional USB 2 which comes with the wire. HD audio just goes to the HD audio port and it's keyed so that you cannot put it the right way up. So we'll put that the correct way up. And finally we use this gig Gigabyte G connector. I'm sure you'll have no difficulties installing that. And you just put that the right way up. And the idea is it just aligns everything for you. And there you go. And that is how to tie everything together on your motherboard. Now we'll show you how to test if your system up to this point works um, before you put an operating system on. Let's get to it. Okay, we've now installed as much as we can into this lovely case and to test whether it works on the top we've got the power button and we'll press that and all the fans should spin up and this motherboard has an array of LEDs that can tell you if there's a fault with one of the things system and everything looks good and of course all the lights have turned off which means it's working so Tell you how to install an operating system. Tell you a bit more about that. Server Grindelwald is now built, and I've managed to get Windows running on it. it runs perfectly. Now, here's just a note on how you can install Windows on a machine. You could use an old school method of using a DVD. Um, if you've got a DVD writer, well then that's good. You'd use a .iso file. You could use a USB flash drive on here, yes, Windows 10, and this is a USB 3 flash drive, and that seems to work okay. Um, so if you did buy a Microsoft OEM version, they would have a pre, you know, you'd, it comes with a USB stick with that, um, and it would come with a license key. When I've done it, you need to buy a license key separately, and you can buy them from Microsoft's website, and that way you get the perfect Windows 10 experience. This has been a brilliant system. I've been testing it out for a while. It runs things like hit films, so video editors, 
you know, like pho Photoshop, Inkscape, all those fun programs runs very well. The one thing I think you'd want to do if you had a bit more money um, would be to add some more memory, but you know, wait for the memory price to go down a bit. But other than that, it's a fantastic system. I don't think, you know, you'll need any upgrades for a very long time. If you do try and use VirtualBox or any other virtualization program, you need to make sure you go into the BIOS and turn SMV, I think it is, which is just a setting that virtualization needs and is disabled by default. But Gigabyte offers some brilliant apps and utilities to help you use the BIOS. I hope you use them. I hope you've enjoyed this video if at all possible. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you then. Don't try this at home. Ed, you are doing it at home. Right? Oh yes. Oh dear. Everyone be quiet in three, two, one, go. Because we can still do like a time lapse or something afterwards. You don't want a time lapse of this. Yes I we mean, do. We want a time lapse. You'd be wasting your life.